things like this happen. Well, what it is, is that's obviously, that's their child. She's got a beautiful dress on. See? She's got a beautiful dress on. She's not getting attention, you see, so she's kind of a bit. I know. Okay, I know. Well, why are you telling me? What? Dear brain. Mummy magic, that is. Mummy magic. <laughs> okay, Lauren and Scott, before you are joined in matrimony, I need to remind you both of the solemn and binding character of the vows you are about to make. Marriage, according to the law of this country, is the union of one man with one woman, voluntarily entered into for life, to the exclusion of all others. It is not to be entered into lightly, nor should it lightly be set aside. This is what the law says, and marriage is much more than this. It is a union to provide the love and friendship, help and comfort that each should have for the other, both in times of joy and in times of sorrow. We have had lots of joy already with Jamie and Molly. But marriage is a desire for two people to share themselves with each other. It deepens and enriches every facet of your life. It calls for trust and honesty, understanding and forgiveness, sometimes the need for compromise, or the ability to say sorry. But marriage is the bringing together of two people who love each other. It's uniting you as husband and wife. And to make your vows to each other, I'd like you to turn and face each other if you can. Turn and face one another and hold all four hands together because the vows you are about to make you're going to make to each other. So I'm going to start with you again, Scott. As you say these words after me, please look at your beautiful bride. <laughs> that shouldn't be difficult. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Scott Bradley Pigeon, do take thee, Lauren Alexandra Howard, to be my lawful wedded wife. Scott, do you promise to love, cherish, and respect Lauren, and to be an honest and faithful companion throughout your lives together? I do. <laughs> so while you say these words, you look at your spot. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Lauren Alexandra Howard, do take the Scott Bradley Pigeon to be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. Lauren, do you promise to love, cherish and respect Scott and to be an honest and faithful companion throughout your lives together? I do. Did you hear that? She said I do. <laughs> We have now come to the giving and receiving of the wedding rings. The wedding ring is an unbroken circle. It has no beginning or end, symbolising unending and everlasting love, and by long tradition forms the seal to the marriage contract. So I'd like to at this point invite our best man, Ed. He told me he had two rings in his pocket, so I hope he has. <laughs> so Ed, if you please present that little one. To Scott, that's it. So, third finger left hand, please, Scott. And just as far as the knuckle. And hold it in place. And while you look at your beautiful bride, you say these words. Lauren, please accept this ring. Lauren, please accept this ring. 
as an outward sign. As an outward sign. Of my love and friendship. My love and friendship. And commitment to our marriage. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Lauren and Scott have chosen a reading which has been personally composed by their friends. Um, so I'd like to now invite get all their names right. Vicky, Jen, Lucy and Louisa please to come forward. Hmm. Sight, but for the first time Lauren and Scott laid eyes on each other was when Katie brought Scott into the post office. This was back in 2002 when Lauren was 18 and Scott was 15. Scott bought a Mother's Day card and Lauren gave him a discount. Of course in Scott's mind this meant she must fancy him but actually Lauren just thought he looked like a chap. A few years later when Scott was legally allowed in a pub Lauren and Scott would often bump into each other mainly in the Brass Monkey, and from the off felt at ease in each other's company and would have in-depth conversations about what was going on in each other's lives. As the weekends went on, it became a running joke that Scott would run out of money, leaving Lauren to buy his JD and coats, which was actually in Lauren's interest as she wanted to keep him out longer. This also gave Lauren the opportunity to introduce Scott to her weird drink concoctions, like some bouquet lemonade and lime, and red wine and cake. Nice. As the nights uh, out continued, Lauren and Scott would dance together to their song, The Dirty Dancing Medley, when Scott asked Lauren for a kiss, a few times, each time Lauren offered her cheek. Finally, on March 21st, 2008, when Lauren was out with Claire and Nick, they met up with Scott, Nigel and Paul, and went back for a few drinks at Lauren's mum's. Everyone crashed out and Lauren and Scott shared their first proper kiss with Claire snoring next to them. It wasn't, it wasn't until the following week that Scott finally picked, plucked up the courage to ask Lauren for her number, but then chickened out and texted Katie for it instead, which happened to be when Lauren was next to her in the car, whilst on the way to the club. Scott was invited out on this night too, but had run out of money. A few weeks went by and Lauren and Scott were spending every day in each other's company, mainly in another local pub called the Common Pen. Many days and nights were spent in the pub garden drinking red wine and coke and pineapple and smoking rollies. 
Then came the big night, April 19th, right. 2008. Scott asked Lauren to be his girlfriend. In Chicago Rock. <laughs> Scott tried to play it cool, but Lauren insisted that he did this the proper way round and made him ask. Lauren was so excited that she went round everyone in Chicago Rock, introducing Scott as her boyfriend. A few months later on came Judgment Day. The day us girls met Scott. He came along to Lauren's partner, as Lauren's partner, to Lucy and Matt's wedding. Scott did very well, made a good impression, got on very well with everyone, including our mums. Yeah, no, and they all thought he was a bit of a dish. Yeah, so he's obviously a bit of a hit with the older ladies as well. On another spontaneous day out with Scott's friends, they took a trip to West Wittering for the day on the beach. The day ended, of course, with a night in the club on the pond. And it was this night that Scott first said the three little words, I love you. Again, Lauren milked this moment by asking every question she could think of. Why do you love me? Hmm. When did you first know that you love me? What do you love most about me? Not making the situation any easier for me. In July 2008, Lauren and Scott went on their first major holiday together to Turkey. They were away for one week and had the best holiday ever. Sun and Sam seeing each other's company. Whilst in Turkey, Scott bought Lauren a ring, but she chose herself, and at this time he debated proposing to her in Turkey, but he didn't. He always had a running joke with her that he would have to wait ten years. In October 2008, they moved in together at the toll gate. This was their first place together. Local to the Cobham Pen, of course. It was here that the decision was made to start a family. It wasn't long after this that Lauren and Scott were expecting Jamie. This moved Lauren and Scott into their new chapter of their lives together, where pubs were no longer their priority. During the pregnancy with Jamie, Lauren and Scott moved out of the toll gate and back in with, Lo with Lauren's mum, Karen, preparing for the Chicago Rock while celebrating Vicky's birthday a couple of weeks before Jamie was due. Turkey that she had worn ever since he bought it from her right hand of course and placed it onto her wedding finger. On Thursday the 28th of January 2010 at 657 came the big day that Janie David Pigeon was born in Queen Alexandra Hospital Portsmouth weighing six pounds seven ounces and I think we'll all agree what a little mini me Scott has here. Of course being a big football fan there was always the argument as to which team Jamie would support, Pompey or Spurs. But with Jamie's time of birth, Scott saw this as a sign that Lauren couldn't argue any more, as he was born now as a new member of the 657 group. When Jamie was six months old, Lauren and Scott were already broody again and decided to extend their family further as they wanted a small gap in age between their children. Not long after this decision, they were expecting Molly. In March 2011, Lauren and Scott moved out of Karen's and into the flat which they're still in now. On moving day, Lauren took the role of bossing everyone around because there wasn't much else she could do at seven and a half months pregnant. It's hard All to see the screen, isn't it? Screen, isn't it? Is I can't, I can just make out the top here. Making sure it's Everyone there. expected Molly to be early, just like Jamie, but at a week late, Lauren sought advice from Lucy on how to encourage Molly to come here. Lucy's advice was to run up the stairs and back down again, jumping the last two. This seemed to work as the next day, whilst out for a few minutes, it's still wet, with Scott and Jamie, Lauren was feeling some strong twinges. This happened on Tuesday, the 14th of June, and being a Tuesday, this fell on a early night. Vicky and Lucy 
offers an opportunity for sharing and growth that no other relationship can offer. And we hope that your mother can join your places and we grow together, but with enough distance to allow each other to be an individual. May you always be able to confide in each other, laugh together, and share moments of peace. But above all, remind yourselves often of the love of each other that brought you your families and your friends. So I have the privilege and the very great pleasure to declare that from this day on, you are husband and wife. And Scott, please seal the occasion and kiss your beautiful bride. our ceremony. I'm going to um, hand the bride and groom over to Melanie so she can take them through that important signing of the register. And I think Ed might put some music on for us perhaps. Yeah. Thank you. Ed.
Did you get the kiss? I, get the kiss. I got the kiss. I'll upload it onto YouTube later. Are you still crying? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,